Welcome to 110 and Rising. Spotlighting business along and beyond the Route 110 corridor. Long Island's economic heartbeat. Brought to you each week by the Melville Chamber of Commerce and Digital Waterworks. Now, here's your host, the president of the Melville Chamber of Commerce, Mike DeLuise. We have today some very, very special guests. Special group of people who I think you're really going to enjoy meeting, Digital Waterworks, a corporate communications production company that got its start back anciently in 1993. They've helped thousands of businesses from small family-run business to Fortune 1000 companies enhance their image with a variety of audio and visual services. I'd like to start by meeting the founder of Digital Waterworks, Dave Goldberg. Also with him today are voiceover actress Linda Bruno and video producer Mike Harris. Welcome, folks. Uh, This is better than having the Z Morning Zoo with us. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know about that. (laughs) Thank you. So, Dave, you and I have a long history, and uh, although we can't talk a lot about it, not only because we only have a few minutes, but uh, I don't think some of this stuff would even in an uncensored uh, podcast be able to be talked about, but uh, we go back to when uh, you were a communications major at Hofstra. That's right. I was a TV production major, and then I had to switch to the film school, but that's a story for another podcast. Yeah, but back in those days, too, my impression, my prediction is you were going to do very, very well. Why don't you talk about, you know, you go from a college student to right away basically starting your own business that I think has really done super well. Sure. Well, I I had my own business, but uh, that really wasn't the career path at the time. When I was at Hofstra in my junior year, I wound up getting a job at Korg USA, uh, the electronic musical instrument distributor. I was there for six years, but during my time there, I wound up in their pro audio division and interfacing with a lot of recording studios, television studios, post-production facilities. And I got to actually demonstrate the equipment that we were selling to the people who are like me today. So I got to actually meet producers, meet engineers, meet directors, and I realized that I really liked what they were doing more than what I was actually doing. And I wanted to be on that side of the camera, if you will. Well, I'm one for saying you discover a niche, you build on it, you do something creative and find success. And uh, when we talk about the beginning of Digital Waterworks, you did some very interesting things. And what were some of the initial things that you offered that not many others did? Well, when I was at Korg, one of the projects that I was assigned to was to create an on-hold message for the company. Believe it or not, they just played uh, CDs at the time of artists that used their equipment. And it occurred to me and, and my boss that we should actually have those artists speaking about the equipment, not just play their music, but actually have them talking about the equipment that they're using. So I created an on-hold message for Korg at the time, and I sort of stepped on something that was kind of cool. And then friends of mine started asking me, hey, you know, can you do that for my business? And my dad had a business, and he said, why don't you do one for my business? So I, I created a product called Info Hold in 1993, and it was the first on-hold message service that was delivered on a compact disc. And recordable compact discs in 1993 were pretty new. The discs actually cost $20 each. <laughs> Times change. And now you can buy a, a blank CD for about 10 cents. And then I know you got into a desktop video and stuff, but before we talk about about video. Let's look at your team. I knew you as a student, and before I knew it, you had this great organization, a kind of eclectic team of superstar professionals, and I've met them. I like them. Tell us a little bit about them. Well, we're we're a boutique. Digital Waterworks is sort of an umbrella company, and um, I'm big into networking. I like uh, when I meet somebody that can compliment me, I become loyal to them, and in turn, they're loyal to me. So over the years, um, for example, Linda, who's sitting across from me, we met 15, I don't know. Oh, God. Yeah, probably 15 years ago. I I was working in radio here on Long Island, and he heard me and called me up and said, hey, you want to do some on-hold messages? And I was like, yeah, I want to get into the voiceover aspect of that. And uh, that's how our friendship began. Linda, you're great, but what attracted you to Digital Waterworks? My Um, my good looks. Yeah. (laughs) 
you know, it just, uh, everything kind of flowed. We had been friends for a while, and then I moved um, back to Long Island. I was in Philadelphia for a little bit, and um, he had some studio space, and I thought, oh, wouldn't it be nice to hang my microphone here? And, you know, we have like a symbiotic relationship because he uses my voice, and then also he does productions. So it just... And Lin- Linda's my day wife. Yeah, okay. pretty much. <laughs> right. Lin- I, actually, Linda- I actually see Linda more every day than I do my own wife. It's true. It's true. <laughs> Linda, in our dreams, we hear you record. Who have you, who have you recorded for? Um, well, currently, I am the female voice for Home Shopping Network. I'm also uh, been the voice for Disney Junior in Southeast Asia for the last, gosh, 10 years. Um, Pfizer, if you ever call Pfizer f- uh, phone number to try and get uh, advice on a on a drug that you that you are taking, I've done Celebrex and Chantix and Effexor and Aromasin. I'm that that boring person that's telling you all the uh, the life uh, shattering things that could possibly happen to you. And if, if you, you take need the drug movie wrong. times, you're going to hear Linda because she's the voice of Fandango. You'd probably hear me more inside of Costco's and WalMarts and Bed Baths and Bed- oh, forget it. I want to yeah. like throw up every time I go to Costco. I'm walking me by too, the TV aisle me. and it's like the new Samsung 60-inch, yeah. and it's Linda. I'm ready to throw up, too. Attention, <laughs> Costco shoppers. <laughs> Linda so, wants you to buy that. Exactly. But a really big <laughs> amount of it. So true. But oh. it's, it's fun. It's fun. Who does the voiceovers here, Dave? Well, I do all the female voiceovers. <laughs> Linda does the male voiceovers. <laughs> and then we have Mike, who actually sometimes does a little He little does the little kid voices, yeah. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. i got to stop you guys for a second. I did one professional voiceover in my life and it was back many many years ago linda before you were born oh and i was dino the dinosaur whoa you know the blimp from the macy's thanksgiving day parade yeah. and someday with two glasses of wine i'll play it for you <laughs> i'd love to hear that it, it was a actually i would say it's a one-day career it was a 30-minute session career. You know, I, I like to say I have a face for radio, but I don't have a voice for radio. But uh, 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 <laughs> now, a, a fun experience, right? Let, let's get back to the video for a second, too. All right? Everybody's talking about video now, whether it's on the web or cable or uh, corporate video or something. And I know with the technology right now, you can do amazing, wonderful things. What types of projects do you folks do? Mike, what, you, put in here, Mike. You tell us what we can do. Well, we specialize in company overview videos, product introduction videos, and even YouTube ad campaigns. The technology now is so much better than it was even five years ago. So we're able to offer better looking videos with faster turnaround time and for less money. I'm going to jump in and, and sort of date things here. Um, you know, when I when Digital Waterworks started with video, there was videotape and then, of course, <laughs> DVDs. And the only way prior to the Internet to get those videos out was on a physical medium. So you actually had to mail that DVD or give it away at a trade show. I mean, it was an incredible expense. So you had the expense of creating the video, but then you probably had an expense perhaps twice, three, four maybe 10 times that to distribute it. And now the videos that we're producing, you know, the costs maybe are the same. Sometimes they're a little more, sometimes less, but the cost to produce the video is inconsequential because the distribution is available for, I don't want to say free, but really. So really the dollar. Yeah. Well, you know, let, that, let me get to something that uh, is a very big interest to me. You know, yes, it's easy to distribute. Technology is, Cut the cost of equipment. Uh, You can get on your computer and through some of the uh, apps, anybody can almost do their own videos. But what I've seen is that everybody thinks they can do their own video. And now, uh, without professional help, some of the stuff we have is really garbage. And I have to say that some people who say they can do it come in because they have a camera that does great high definition and picks up sound. Uh, I'd like you to talk a little bit about why you need, whether you have a company or you're doing a special event, why do you need somebody who really knows what they're doing? Is it just in the technology or that what kind of a special training or talent do you need in when you're looking to have somebody to do video or even now audio? Well, you have to be an artist first because it's an art form. Uh, it, it Just because you've got great equipment is not necessarily going to mean you're going to make a great video. Um, you know, I like to use this analogy, but if you put Mario Andretti in a Volkswagen Beetle and you put me in a Ferrari, he's probably going to win the race. 
You know, because he's got the skill and the experience. It's right. not the car. It's the driver. You know, you know, we're not using any proprietary equipment, but we approach it with a different eye and the experience. You know, we, we all have been doing this for a long, long time. We're, we're, this is not something we've been at for a couple of years. And I know that years ago, I mean, too many to mention when you were a student, you probably learned a number of things when you were a student in a communications major. Well, I definitely did because I started here as an intern. <laughs> right. Well, you know, I really support internship programs, and we've done programs about that uh, with a, a, other podcasts. Internships are an essential part of learning a business. What Sometimes it's great because you get into the business you love, but sometimes it's even more important because you find out it's not the business you want to be in. You can do something else. Uh, I think education is very important. Just having a piece of equipment that you can point someplace and hope that it picks up the right lighting or the right cropping or whatever it's going to be. Uh, it, it takes, I think, sometimes more than talent. It takes learning how to use, do this stuff. And I think you guys have proven you have learned how to do it. You know, I'm probably, this is going to go off into a tangent, but I think one of our, something that we really excel in is listening and communicating, listening to and communicating well with our clients. There are a lot of really talented people out there, competitors of ours, but they don't have the ability to develop that camaraderie and the relationship with their clients. And I'm, I'm very proud to say that we're, we're very friendly. We become very friendly with our clients. To well, the, talking about being friendly with a client, Client comes to you and says, I need something done, whether it's a corporate video or something from my website. People today aren't sure when it comes to a budget, what is it going to cost? Does it have to be expensive or should it be expensive or should you do it the cheapest way you can? Um, you know, first of all, expensive is relative. How much does a house cost? You know, if, if you walk up to a realtor and say, I want to buy a house. What's it going to cost? <laughs> You're not really going to get an answer from that realtor. Do we produce videos for 800 bucks? No. Do we produce videos for 80 grand? We would love to, but most of them are not in that price range. It really depends who the client is, what their needs are, what they want the video to do. You know, a lot of it depends on the market. You know, right. are we producing a commercial for the Super Bowl? Or are we producing something that might be for a very small audience of 100 people? But even a commercial for the Super Bowl, back in my day, and I'm ancient compared to all of you, when we would do a TV commercial, 30-second TV commercial, or 60 could cost $150,000, $200,000. Equipment technology has brought that down to where you can actually do some wonderful things for a fraction of that, and it really looks spectacular. Somebody, You know, Mike, let me just jump in for a sec. People tend to forget that the most important part in doing any kind of marketing, whether it be video or even the written word, is the message. That's exactly right. Our goal is to craft a message with our clients that accurately expresses the vision of their company. That's what we're after. So when we sit down with clients, before we even discuss budget, we have to hone in that message. And then we let that message dictate where the video goes. We produce corporate overview videos, product introduction videos, instructional videos, C-level executive interviews and testimonials, client testimonials. I mean, you name it. And then there's online advertising. You want your video to be seen by an audience of 10,000 people? You choose that specific audience of 10,000 people. The playing field has changed. This is no longer broadcast and cable TV where you choose a network and you hope that a certain demographic is watching at a particular time. Not anymore. Yeah, and in broadcast, it's really just a blanket audience. You have a general idea of who's going to see your video. But if you do an advertisement on YouTube, you have the ability to choose the exact audience audience you want to reach i mean you you can pick race you can pick gender location religion, where they live hobbies and you get the metrics to show you exactly when these people watched your video how many you really know where your advertising dollars are going so the data that you get from a youtube ad campaign is way beyond what you'd get in traditional advertising the folks at digital waterworks are a great team and i want to thank you 
Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Dave. How do we get in touch with you if we want to get involved in some of your services? We would love for you to go to our website because you can learn more about us, meet us. You hear samples and things, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. we've got demos of See everything. pictures of our studio, and we have a beautiful facility Linda's here. lovely face. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we have examples of videos. We keep it pretty current. Every new video we produce goes up there, but our name is spelled Waterworks with an X, so it's water... Works, W-O-R-X dot com. Or call us the old-fashioned way. It's 516-752-2787. Or come on down. We have a great studio. Oh, here. yeah. We love to have this. And, and I have to tell everyone that, you know, I'm, I'm having a great time interviewing you. I wish we could go on forever because not only do you guys look great, but your voices are so cool and soothing that uh, I want you just to talk to me for the rest of the day. <laughs> they sound better on Friday afternoons when we open the wine. <laughs> well, you know what? After this is over, we'll go get a glass of wine and celebrate. But I want to thank you again, and I want to thank all our listeners to uh, tuning in to 110 and Rising. We enjoy sharing our day with you. Please give us a call at the Melville Chamber of Commerce, 631-777-6260. Let us know what we can do to help you and your business. Thank you, Dave, Linda, and Mike, and we will see you guys soon. Organizations such as the Melville Chamber of Commerce can be a most important asset to you and your business. Active Chamber members find business and profits grow as they strengthen networking skills, collaborate with other business leaders, recruit the best employees, get to know their elected officials, and build a community for themselves, their families, and neighbors. There are enormous opportunities to do great things on Long Island in business and in life. The sole purpose of the Melville Chamber of Commerce is to help you seize those opportunities that can offer you the success you've worked so hard to achieve. No matter how big or small your organization might be, our sole purpose is to help you succeed. The Melville Chamber of Commerce is a not-for-profit business group with more than 450 members. Our mission is to serve the needs of all who do business and live on Long Island. To find out more, call the Melville Chamber of Commerce at 631-777-6260 or visit melvillechamber.org. Production services for this podcast were provided by Digital Waterworks Corporate Communication Production, offering corporate audio and video production services. Visit waterworks.com, W-A-T-E-R-W-O-R-X dot com.